What's up, everybody? It's the Hardy Construction. You can find Hardy Construction on Instagram, Tumblr, YouTube, as well as Facebook with your host, Comp and... Chest Rub Lily. And today's film is... <laughs> Hell Driver, uh, 2010. Hell Driver, 2010. Nihon Bundan. Heru Durai Buro! Directed by Yoshihiro Nishimura, written by Yoshihiro Nishimura and Daichi Nagisa. is a film, a horror film from Japan. Mm-hmm. Still reeling from the events of a zombie apocalypse, a young woman along with a group of allies makes her way across the dystopian Japan in search of her mother, the zombie queen. Uh-huh. <laughs> <laughs> Why did I pick this film? Who knows? I, did. I guess because of Tokyo Gore Police. Yeah, we did Tokyo Gore Police, and I felt like, what the hell, I wanted, always wanted to talk about this film. I hadn't seen the film fully years ago and uh-huh. uh i remember just catching the last sequence i remember seeing you know how crazy Tokyo what Warp the giant was. flying thing yeah the giant zombie made out of zombies so i was like uh-huh. huh we got to talk about this movie one day anyway so this film stars yumiko hara as kika eihi shina as rika oh i didn't get that their names are supposed to rhyme and she is um she is uh, oh yeah she is what's it called from audition, and also she is in that Tokyo Gore Police. There's a the call. There's a also a callback to audition in this movie, so it, I'll get to it. Is there? Okay. Yeah, Kazuki Namioka as Kaito, as well as Yure Yanagi as Taku. I don't really know anybody's characters besides. Kiko yeah, the only Rika. name I really knew was the main people, and then also the uncle and no name. But then I eventually say his name. Yeah, this this is a film that is. If there's any definition of punk rock filmmaking, that would be this. Because it's very much in the vein of... Because you always hear, oh, punk rock aesthetics when they make movies. And I'm always like, what the fuck does that mean? Does that mean, like... I mean, the closest I can think is, like, Takashi Miike with certain films of his, like, Gozu. But that's, like, kind of weird art house films. Punk rock filmmaking, whenever I hear the term, is most likely, like, it's just sort of shitty, cheaply made films. But... These films uh-huh. are cheaply made, but I don't think they're shitty in any way. So, I mean, why, why don't you it's, get into... It's, it's so... This, there's points in this movie where I was like, what am I looking at? Like, why do you say that? What, what? Just some of the stuff that happened was so bizarre. Like, I was just like, I'm trying to comprehend it. Like, the, the, the baby face scene, like, that was the point where I was like, it, my rating went up a notch at that oh, point. okay. Yeah, it's just like it was just so strange, like what I was looking at. Like, I've never seen anything like it in a movie before. I guess is what I'm saying. So there is a difference between punk rock filmmaking and punk films, because there's obviously films about punk uh, subculture, but or punk culture, I guess. But punk rock filmmaking is sort of uh, uh, on the seat of your pants filmmaking, like just kind of crazy filmmaking, and it doesn't really adhere to normal film types mm-hmm. and this right. certainly is one of those this is a film that i mean the fucking the opening credits of the movie don't start till 48 minutes into it which i yeah. thought was pretty awesome and it's a film that has two sort of entry points the first one is sort of a, an evil dead sort of type of film and then the second half becomes like the running man meets evil dead so <laughs> it's it's very strange but i i love this i, I actually love how the film came out and it is a good successor to the Tokyo Gore Police type of filmmaking. You know what I mean? It, it, I, mean. I, I think Tokyo <laughs> Gore Police was a little bit more uh, of a, like a cohesive film that made sense. Sort of. Yeah. I think sort this of. film had... <laughs> I actually think this film had better world building, building in it, but I understand okay. what you mean that it has... Uh, Tokyo Gore Police had better uh, cohesive storytelling in it because it was, it was sort of sticking to one narrative as opposed to jumping between three narratives in this film there's like one one plot is obviously rika who is a girl who 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 unfortunately is related her mother uh i believe kika is the main girl rika is her mother who is a crazy person played by ahi shina uh the woman from audition and when i mean it's a call playing crazy people yeah she's she's really good i think she's actually better in this film than she was in audition or in um tokyo gore police as an actress i think she plays a she is pretty good as, like, a crazy, scary zombie lady. Yeah, like, her acting was different in this film as opposed to the other two films. Because in, in Audition, she was sort of meek and quiet until she was sort of crazy at the end. And in Tokyo Gore Police, she was sort of the stone-faced, you know, uh, Terminator. Right. And in this one, she's kind of just playing an over-the-top witch, 
which she she does really well in this one, and she actually looks. I thought she was like really hot in this movie. I don't know what it was. She, she looked different. no, she is she is super hot. Especially the makeup look for her, how she looks like a monster. She looks really cool in the movie. Like they the there's nothing there's no question that these guys, whoever Yoshihiro hires with his crew, because obviously he's he's an effects guy himself. Like mm-hmm. he's just fantastic in art direction. Everybody who does the art direction in this film, it's incredible. Especially like that little you know that geisha woman, the one who yeah. runs that that zombie bar. You know how like yeah, yeah, she yeah. actually looks like she looks beautiful like graceful looking even though she's a zombie um but she has like the least like zombie effects on her face you know what i mean so that's probably why she's so gorgeous i like her eyelashes right yeah they're like these multicolored eyelash false eyelashes but anyway the the um the 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 um the thing that links it to audition is when um rika when she's tickling the heart Uh uh that she has her daughter's heart is in her chest and she's like giddy 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 giddy. That's the same thing that she's saying when she's um stabbing the guy in the chest with the pins in audition. Oh, okay. She's saying the same. She's like giddy giddy giddy. Been a while. Giddy, giddy, the same way. Yeah, also. yeah. It was just something that automatically. I was like, oh yeah, I remember that scene because for some reason. Also, I saw... there was a throwback to Tokyo Gore Police, I believe. Oh yeah. Well, well, I'm not sure if Tokyo Gore Police was made before, but there was yeah, a point, was. like without even mentioning it, where um. One of the characters, I, I think it was Kika, had like scars on her arm, like cutting scars. Yeah, I saw that too. Yeah, I noticed that. I was like, huh? They like it wasn't something they went into. I assume they did that just because of her shitty relationship with her mother. That was just some sort of plot that they didn't get into. Oh, okay. Um, I did laugh at how how bad, how much of a bastard her mother is with her brother. I guess they were too, <laughs> they were two serial killers, and that uh, at the beginning of the movie they were like, uh, "There's no time sense of time in this film." It hops around a lot. Yeah, because the beginning of the film, it shows Rika and she saves this guy who's trying to take these. Okay, so uh, what what's wrong with the zombies? Like, what what are these zombies? They're <laughs> they're extraterrestrial a, 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 of origin. A, a, me- right? a meteorite hit her mom, and I guess her mom is so evil that she's able to like become like a sentient zombie from it or something, and right. then. She goes into like a cocoon or something, and that's what and saves then, Kika's life as well because she gets cocooned, living with yeah, her heart. Yeah, but her heart got ripped out. But then I guess she's still in the cocoon. But in the cocoon, the ash spreads her. It was really vague. No, what happens is with Kiko. This is what I figured out: is that because the the government, I'm going to try to do this completely uh, without going crazy. Yeah, is okay. So there's. Rika's father gets his legs chopped off, like actually eaten, because her mother is a cannibal with her brother. They're psychopaths. I don't know how she even. Why would he marry him? I don't know. Uh, I don't even know why she had like a had a kid and waited nine months with her brother being crazy. Do you think she has postpartum depression? I could be that. Her uh, anyway. So Kika decides to burn her uncle's forehead with. I don't know if it was a swastika or a manji. I assume for the movie it was a swastika. Because right. a manji obviously is the regular the, version the of that symbol. original swastika that was good luck, right? Yeah, and so the reverse, I think the Nazis actually reversed the image. So I couldn't tell. Yeah. I guess I assume for the movie it's a, it's a swastika. There's heavy Nazi stuff in this movie. Like the, 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 yeah. so, so-and-so bad guy, <laughs> who, who I don't really think is a bad guy. He's just sort of the opposition who wants to destroy the zombies, which doesn't necessarily make him a bad person. What he does is bad to kind of get it rolling. But he's like normal looking dude, and then he grows a Hitler mustache and becomes like a, a Nazi leader for some reason yeah. like in the film. Doesn't make any no, sense. No, honestly, he's got the right point. Those other <laughs> people does. that they're are not... saying they're humans, like, they're yeah. stupid. It literally, it's like a leftist versus rightist movie. It's very funny because you actually yeah. see two sides. So, anyway, going back to Kika, she actually, you know, she runs out of the house, and while her mother is attacking her, a sort of meteorite comes from outer space goes through her mother ca- causing a hole and uh i guess it flies over uh, kika's head but she still gets affected because the mother is sort of getting cocooned while she's grabbing her her mother yeah. rips her heart out of her chest puts it in her chest <laughs> cavity and they both get cocooned when that happens i guess the government gets kika and they're uh-huh. trying to build a robot force a robot did you, army did you ever see the movie meteor man I did. I saw parts of that movie. I Bill, Co- Bill Cosby's in it. Because <laughs> he gets superpowers at the end. Thank God he didn't keep those superpowers. He could have gotten even worse. Yeah, oh, um, my God. He, he doesn't need the drugs anymore. He could just make people pass out. I will still say that movie has one of the best jokes I've ever seen where he wakes up. Because this is after Robert. I forgot the guy's name. Robert something, the actor. Townsend. 
Robert Townsend, he gets hit by a meteorite, uh, and he wakes up at the hospital, and they unwrap his, you know, bandages off his face, and they're like, oh my god, like, you don't see him, and he goes, oh my god, oh, oh man, oh, you're gonna look really <laughs> different, and they hold up a mirror to him, and he goes like, no, this is how I always looked, and they go, oh, okay, like, so they thought his face got mangled, I thought that was pretty good, and also, I don't know if it was a precursor to Demolition Man, right, because they were fighting all those black dudes with the blonde hair, just like um, um... Wesley Snipes. No, I don't think so. I don't think they're linked. Right, really? No, I I'm just saying. I, th- I don't know if that. I think that movie came out before Demolition Man. Anyway, uh, oh, okay. Meteor Man. Go watch that movie. It's fun. And, and so, Demolition Man too. It's amazing. So I believe the government, the anti-zombie section of the government, the opposition, were building a robot sort of army, and they put um, robot hearts in them. For some reason, that doesn't let you turn into a zombie or first i have no clue what that means they didn't really explain <laughs> yeah i just i just remember seeing one of the signs said um it's anti-zombie something it's like they build they put robot uh hearts in their chest and these people are able to survive so they do that to kika i don't know why because you know they know they do it to other people in the movie maybe she was just like a test subject because she got you know if she, she had was that gonna die anyway on. i guess so anyway what's weird about the timing in this movie is the movie starts out with the guy who gets his dick bitten off in, um, so what it was Tokyo that Borkinus. guy? Okay, yeah, cool, it was cool, Benny. Cool. I forget his last name. And he, he's like trying to steal those, these. Um, yeah, you know, watching it the now, horns. I really don't understand it. It's no, kinda, they're they, trying to steal the horns because the horns. No, can no, no, be no. Used no. As a drug. I, yeah, it can use it as a drug, but they fucked this up because at the beginning of the movie, this guy's trying to steal it. Here, here's what I'm gonna explain. So he's stealing these horns off these zombies' heads, right? Uh huh. And then Kika comes out. Now I understood why the movie's called Hell Driver because there's a truck <laughs> they drive around, and I didn't understand that because I'm so stupid. Oh, I see. She comes out and she saves his ass, right? Yeah. And then it goes into an origin story in the movie, right? Right. Yeah. They defeat the zombies by the end of the origin story. So why are there still zombies at the beginning of the film? Hmm. Well, maybe <laughs> the maybe... opening. No, no, because the opening of the film takes place after the beginning of the movie, and then when they kill the ro- zombie queen, they're all dead by then. So why would there still be zombies on the wall? Are you sure the timeline actually? Yeah, is because that af- exactly after this, because she's already in the truck, so she's obviously the hell driver, right? I guess. So, and then it cuts back to when she was younger and has to deal with her mother, and she goes, "That's that was one year ago," and she wakes up with the robot chest. That's when she meets her friends, and then they just they start doing the hell driver stuff, and they defeat the the zombie queen. Right. So the oh, opening. Well. Of, oh yeah, no, the, you're right. The actually. opening of the movie has no. They fucked up. Ah, whatever. Okay, it's still entertaining. I just like completely got. I have no clue. <laughs> just, I just fucked your up the rating movie. just went down one point. Nah, it's all right. It's just absurd. It's an absurd, uh, bizarre movie. Yeah, anyway, it, I didn't understand why people's heads were exploding when he was shooting them at first. I really didn't get. I was like, "What the fuck?" And then, like, I realized, "Oh, because the horn is explosive." Yeah, the thing that I guess they they based it after mangoes or what was those the sort of uh, what fruit was it that they had in the movie? Melon. Uh, some yeah, melon that has that same sort of you know. I guess that's what what the plant. I had like. no idea why it was saying melon. I didn't understand. <laughs> so I guess that was the gag in the film. Um, what did you think of the main actress in the film? Oh, uh, she was, you know, like a generic sort of actress. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> like, she was. I mean, was she was. Okay. Right. It was so funny because she doesn't look Japanese to me. She looked sort of like Southeast Asian or something like that. But yeah, her name she is. Actually, she definitely did not look Japanese. To she me. looks sort of like a Philip, and this is not an insult to her. She's actually very pretty. Um, but her name is Yumiko Hara, so I she might she not be. Japanese. Oh, is she? Well, maybe yeah, she. Maybe she's half Japanese, half something else. Yeah, she was in from movies from 2007 to 2013. So I guess she's not acting in anything else. I think she. Yeah, I don't know. Well, well. I, I mean, she, she did good. Right. She is like a decent actress. That you she was decent. Like I thought, she was actually the her best acting is when she was beating up her mom and crying. Yeah, well, that, that's the I only part like, where she actually does anything. Like there was actual real acting in that scene. The rest of she's sort of stone faced. Not stone faced like the girl was in Tokyo Gore Police. Maybe that's what. Um, I guess that's what you, the director of this film. Maybe he just kind of has stone faced main characters. So the he, he has easy a few things on. that were like shoutbacks. Like he had the the sword people legs and. All that kind of stuff. Like, he has kind of, like, a theme of, like, a bad guy. and Like, I've noticed 
Like, I love how the ro- I love how the Robo Police look with those sort of weird Shinto era masks. Those big with giant the saws like, on them. Yeah, that yeah. They sort of look badass. like something out of Silent Hill. Like their masks are fucking awesome. They're just like these giant masks. That, I didn't uh, expect them to actually be like chainsaws on the front. That yeah, yeah, really that cool. too. And they have like these sword. They have these buzzsaw swords and and shit like that. Like just the look. Like when I was watching, I was like, man, I wish there was more of those characters. And for some reason, I don't know why they had that brother and sister at the end of the film. Like, <laughs> yeah, that was really because they they at the at, at around the like fifteen minutes towards the end of the film, they bring out this incredibly handsome brother and sister character in the movie, mm-hmm. and I'm like, okay, what are they gonna do with sister these two was characters? So hot, I have to say. <laughs> and, and I'm like watching this going, I was like, are these like famous singers or something that I couldn't? I don't know what their names are, and I don't think they're really listed in the film. Uh, no, they IMDb. are. They're listed. They are. Well, what are they? What's their names? Uh, I, I looked it, at, well, hold on. Let me get on to the IMDb. Keep talking. Because I'm looking at them, and I'm like, are these, like, singers or something? And they just put them in as sort of a, as a flashy cameo in the film? Because it didn't make any sense. I was like... Because throughout the whole film, at the beginning of the movie, they say a robot force or some shit like that. And I was like, uh-huh. okay, I'm waiting for some sort of secondary villains, like secondary robots to come out. And, you know... Okay, yeah. Walgard, Asami, uh... That's the only one that has a name, but this is definitely her. Asami. Uh, Asami is the name of her. And, uh, I mean, her real name is Asami, so that's probably Oh, her. shit. As- is that her, Asami? She's you probably a singer or something. She's yeah. in this movie. <laughs> Let me see if she's in the movie that I'm thinking. She's in a lot of, I guess, these she's, sort oh, of Oh, shit. Weird... She's in, like, Oh, everything. she was in, okay, she was in this movie called Gunwoman. It's this fucking. Is she fucking... Gunwoman? Yes, yeah, she is. It's okay. a it's a fucking absurdist. Just she's in the movie eighty. Well, Danny, you'll watch this movie, I guess, because she's completely naked in the movie. Oh wow! And she's just shooting the shit out of people with this big gun. And it's yeah, like, I'll watch that because that movie's about <laughs> that movie's about this creep who. Uh, um, okay, it's, I guess it's not funny how I'm gonna explain this movie, but it has to do with a, a sick rapist who kills women and then he rapes them. And she oh, gets geez. brought because I guess she that guy must have killed her family, and uh-huh. so she goes under the guise of being dead. Uh, and I don't, she doesn't get assaulted. I don't think so, but she blasts the shit out of everybody. It's a very so um, it's a revenge. Or it's a revenge yeah, it's like a revenge. Show. It's like a, a like a like hardcore. Um, oh, her um, picture is so hot too. It's just her with blood all. Yeah, over that's her. the oh. poster for Gunwoman. You got to see that movie, Dan. You'll enjoy that movie. That movie's like yeah. so fucked up, but it's not a h- typical horror film. But I think we should review it one day just because it's so absurd. But it's we like don't, super we violent. We don't do typical. We just do whatever we want. Yeah, that's <laughs> true. Anyway, so here's the thing: this movie has a lot of shit that happens in it. That's like okay. Imagine every other scene of this film is like you're fighting a boss at the end of a level from a video yeah. game. That's exactly what it is because every single person that they fight in this film is so incredibly unique in their design that you could have imagined them as final bosses in their own movie. It's like, just so absurd. So, like, there's the car scene, and they're hanging from the car by one hand flying in the air. It's like, I don't know how to take this. Yeah, because she, <laughs> she ends up crewing up with this... Uh, they save her... Well, they save her life, uh, essentially, I guess, because she... She runs into this uh, a guy who I call Hat Man and Silent no Boy. Name. That's no his, name. that his name. Yeah, and the and the guy who doesn't talk, the mute kid. Yeah, that's his name. The, oh, oh, sorry. Yeah, you're right, cowboy guy. Um, no, no, then, no, no. That's the third guy. The two guys she met. The guy who got his legs chopped off. That's the guy with a little hat. He yeah, had a hat on. The guy. I recognize him. I and then totally there's a recognize him. there's a young guy who doesn't have any talk. He's looking for his who doesn't talk. Who's looking for his sister. Uh, who was in Zombie Town? She was actually in the Zombie Bar. And then there's a third guy who's like a cowboy, but he's wearing an Australian hat. So <laughs> I couldn't tell. By the way, oh my God, I gotta say, I'm just watching the scene as we're talking about this. The uh-huh. part, <laughs> the part where the uh, meteorite goes through the the evil mother. Uh huh. That had to be the greatest overacting I've ever seen of the brother. <laughs> He does a reaction where he's like watching. Uh, he sees the sister get hit with. Um, <laughs> he sees the <laughs> sister get hit with the meteorite, yeah. and it's the single greatest fucking thing I've ever heard in my life. He's like, oh, yeah, go back he's like that. It's the greatest fucking overacting I've ever seen in my life. It's so fucking funny because it's so stupid. The Japanese tend to do. They tend to. They tend to have similar phrases. Or, or 
I guess it's sort of like in 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 regular nature for them, like from watching TV. Something like you know how when we hear an Italian person say "Get the fuck out of here," and you hear that like right, it's almost verbatim every time you hear any other Italian person say that. <laughs> like uh, like in this, like in Japan, they have plenty of that. Like they go, <laughs> they do that a lot <laughs> in their movies when they're shocked. But it's so over the top, bad acting. Like I couldn't imagine anybody else doing it. Like in reality, yeah. like it doesn't seem like it's from this planet. And um, anyway. well, I have to say, you know, you, there's that stereotype of New Yorkers, and they're always like, "Hey, I'm walking here." <laughs> I, I <laughs> actually tell me about that, right? Yeah. I actually saw that in real life the other day. Not the other day; it was like maybe uh, two months ago or something. But no, there's a guy walk across the street, taxi almost to him, he goes, "Hey, I'm walking here." <laughs> and remember, it that was, really happened. It was that real. line was famous because it was Dustin Hoffman, and now we find out Dustin Hoffman is a molester of women, and so he like, would. <laughs> He would get out of showers in front of his daughter's 16-year-old friend's nude. Oh, Could you no. <laughs> no, I didn't Hoffman. know that. I didn't know that. <laughs> it's not funny what happened to her. I'm just saying it's Dustin Hoffman. It's like That's so fucked up. I bet you he'll revert to his... Um, uh, Meet the fuckers. He'll revert to the character from Dick Tracy. What was the guy? Mushmouth? Or, no, well, it wasn't Mushmouth. It was Mumbles or something. He was like... Whoa, 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 I didn't that. even know that was him. Yeah, he was great in that movie. Too bad he's also great at being a molester. That bastard. No good. Yeah. So who would you say is your favorite sub-boss? Like, who is your favorite sub-boss um, in this movie? Definitely the baby hand face person. Yeah, the, the baby hand. Oh, you mean the woman that you, um, she has a baby on an umbilical cord. Not the umbilical around. cord one. Okay. The one that's also in that scene that has hands growing out of his face. You mean the spider woman? Yeah, but there's hands growing out of the face. Oh, yeah, yeah. She has, No, I think she's just like a couple... Okay, so there's a scene where there's a pile of body parts on the floor, and then out of it merges a mutant person that's just like... It reminded me, obviously, of the gimp, or the person with no arms or legs yeah. from Tokyo Gorpolis. Well, that's what I'm saying. It was yeah, a this similar person, throwback. The hands also grab onto swords, so it makes it sort of like arachnid, like but when spider it, legs. But it's at incredible. one point, the hands grabbed forks, and all the human hands grabbed yes. guns, <laughs> and it was just like, what's happening? And it's flying in the air with the AK-47s. Oh, not AK-47s. Yeah. Um, uh, What are those guns called? Those giant I don't guns. know. I'm not a gun uh, person. I'm not a gun guy. And it's like shooting like crazy, and it's just amazing. And then there's this guy who's made out of like swords, or has all these piercings Oh, with him. a car in the air hitting him and shit? Yeah. Oh, and that was so great, because I was watching it going like this is fuck i mean and the movie's ridiculous but that's really ridiculous like the car actually fights back yeah no it was like see that was the point because up until that point i was like oh this is just like too stupid like you know oh like, did you i was enjoying myself no no i mean i'm enjoying stuff. it but it's just like oh man this is just like nonsense but that when it got to that point with that thing with the face the hands out of the face holding forks and shit i was like okay this is so absurd it's actually good now there's that <laughs> there's that sort of slow zombie uh, I mean, the movie's fucking inventive. The guy who has a giant sword and he like cuts three zombies' heads off at the same time. Oh, that was cool. Yeah, he's they're not like baseball. Them. Like, here's the thing with uh, Yoshi. What was his name? I keep getting this guy's name wrong. Yoshimura. Uh, sorry, Yoshihiro. It's just that Yo- Yoshihiro Nishimura. His movies have incredible bouts of inventiveness. They're just absolutely bizarre, but very inventive. And the yeah. fact that it, like it's inventive in the way that like say army of darknesses do you know how like just weird right. shit that they just threw at the wall and it sticks yeah and the like is, when the mirrors shatter and there were all the little ones and stuff like and that even cool. and even if he's not sort of a typical director where you see you know plot a b and c and it just kind of goes through like he his shit doesn't really fall flat like if you see it you're like oh i've never seen that in a movie and it's interesting it's not yeah. like it's not like, you know how we talked about in Tokyo Gore Police, those bad directors just make really fucking stupid, horrible horror movies trying to shock people. And him, mm-hmm. he's trying to shock people, but he's funny about it. You know, it's like... Yeah, he's it's basically just like... Cheek. He's like a effects guy that's like, oh, it'd be really cool to have a thing with hands growing out of its face holding forks as there's machine guns. Yeah, let's do that. Like, I know, and, they, and the thing is, all that weird shit like, feels organic in the movie. It doesn't feel out of place or it's just being stupid. And the yeah. movie's chock full of a lot of people. Like, the movie's obviously done for a low budget, but and, and you feel it sometimes, but it feels kind of organic to the movie. Like, it doesn't feel, like, shitty. You know what I mean? It's like, almost like, uh, like Tim and Eric level at some points. Like, the effects, <laughs> right. I mean. But it's like, but that's fun. It's fun. Who cares? I mean, there's a part where the uncle is driving a car made out of bodies. 
Mm-hmm. And they're having that chase scene, and it's absurd because the car, the the hell driver truck, is driving really fast, but it can't drive. <laughs> In reality, it can't drive so fast that a person is flying straight while they're <laughs> like in real life. You'll just kind of slump over and fall. Like the guys, yeah. they're trying to say that he's driving so fast that he's in air, like super. And then there's does. another person hanging from him too. Yeah, and there's also like some weird subplot of a priest who's trying to preach that the zombies are equal to humans. And then he right. just gets zombie. He gets eaten. Like he I did enjoy the when zombie. the ambassador got the uh, wine cork in his head, and they yeah. thought he was a zombie. And yeah, and, they, and the guy who's like the head wall guard, like takes his mask off and then sm- and smiles about it. And I'm like, you helped him. Like I guess he must have thought he was an asshole, but the guy was right. The zombies are pieces of shit. Like that's all they. No, I think he was smiling because he killed a zombie. I don't think he realized. No, he knew that was his fucking boss. He was the guy, only guy with a fucking Hitler mustache there. Uh, what would you think of the giant zombie fight? At the, I wish the, the fight between the mother and daughter could have been a lot better. Just yeah, sort of, that was actually a little bit of a letdown. Um, yeah, because they kind of just slapped each other, and they were obviously slapping dummies. That was the funniest part. Like, she was just slapping a dummy head. The part where the thing is fucking flying with the rockets The was huge amazing. monster. And, yeah, I mean, it's just, this is why I was like, we have to do this movie, because... Just a shot of that giant, it's a giant, like, humanoid made out of hundreds of thousands of zombies just clamoring yeah. together. And it holds on to this. There's a Clive Barker book that's oh, like is it? that. Yeah, it's, I mean, I'm not saying that they're ripping it off. I'm just saying that's, like, a cool idea of, like, a golem made out of body parts and shit. Oh, okay. Yeah. But, it I mean, it's in, just. It was in Book of Blood. It was a short story. I just can't remember what the hell it was called. It's just incredible looking. Just all they're just all fighting over corpses float, you know, in the air, and that's like <laughs> that's the finale of the movie. Them fighting in mid air on top of a giant man. <laughs> like I mean, come on, what the fuck is that? Yeah. It's great, and the zom- the zombie queen looks incredible. She just has an awesome look to her. Like I love her her um, contact lenses. You know, just the look yeah. of her. She looks like um, the Violator from Spawn. You know, because she has real those- hot. And then oh my god, really when her headpiece starts orchestrating. Yes, it's like a starfish on her head. Yeah, um, it's like a horn starfish. And then, like, I even sat, actually watched all the end credits, and it's like beautiful end credits of her head floating in outer space through the galaxies. And then it goes through the. Um... Was that fucking Dragon Ball reference at the very end? <laughs> I swear. Oh, I don't you... think so. No, because her head floats to another planet, and there's like a Dragon Ball esque looking character, a blue. I think alien. it was just showing like now she spread the infection to an alien race. <laughs> it's so absolutely stupid i was like what the fuck is this but i actually enjoyed i enjoyed myself uh my time watching this film because it was a worthy successor to tokyo gore police was it as good it still had like robocop references as well like the false media stuff but i I think it's a a little lesser than tokyo gore police but i can't really say why maybe it's because it wasn't as much of a story yeah and it wasn't as characters as much it wasn't as it was much more lighthearted than Tokyo Gore Police. Tokyo Gore Police was more sort of uh, gruesome in a way that it's it's nihilistic. Like Tokyo Gore Police, you like you care about the main character to some extent, and then like oh that fucking asshole boss like betrayed her, blah blah blah. And this oh. is just like there's points where like you don't even have to know what's happening. It's just watching cool. Shit also, happen. Tokyo Gore Police was much more mean spirited. I think in a, as a movie, like I don't think it's you know mean to. Do you know what I mean? Like, it's much more darker in tone than this film yeah. is. Even though this film has equal amounts of gore. Although, I, w- I gotta say, I was upset that... You know, when they because they split a lot of people in half in this movie. There's, like, mm-hmm. a, at least four or five people getting split in half. Yeah. And I would expect, like, mountains of blood to come out of them, but it was, like, kind of le- weak sprays. And I was like, I was, <laughs> that's a bizarre thing to be upset by. But I right. thought they could have gotten more blood out of those people. But well, I there are points was- where there's blood where there's not even wounds. Like, at one point, Kika is screaming at the sky and blood's raining on her it's like why is there blood in this i part? know <laughs> um i would give this movie a seven out of ten it's a decent rating because i like the movie a lot i think it's fun it's something you should watch you know a seven out of ten <laughs> being with your brother and beating your husband's legs while he's in a wheelchair because he was trying to give his daughter a uh, pudding for <laughs> birthday instead of a cake did you see that scene where she was just beating his legs? And yeah. He had no oh, also, there's, to there's a eating a bug <laughs> references, too, in this, again. Oh, what? He was eating the roaches. Oh, yeah. They, was like, oh, damn they it, fry the roaches. You, again? you can tell the director was like, okay, just 
eat them and look at the camera. That's it. Yeah. And he does that. He opens his mouth. It was just so funny. Was it the same actor? Or is this the guy that? Eats I mean, it bugs could be. I mean, it could be the the person in the first one looked a little heavier, so maybe they lost weight. But I'm not. And they have blonde yeah, hair. Yeah, probably puking so much from eating all these bugs. <laughs> but it does great. What was your rating for this film? Uh, I'm gonna. I agree with you. I'm gonna give it like a set. I think I gave Tokyo Gore Plays like more, but I'm gonna give it like a seven out of ten. Uh, putting the credits and title sequence 47 minutes into a movie. That's pretty awesome, though. <laughs> it is. And with that, Danny, what's the final word? Um, happy, happy day. The horror deconstruction.